This is another of these uh, tiny little Doppler lamps. Now, in the past, we've been used to looking at the nipple lamps, the passive infrared detector lamps that detect when you walk into the room because it can see the heat of your body. And the first of these lamps, the Doppler ones I took apart, creeped me out. I'm honestly, when I got it, I thought initially that it wasn't working because it always seemed on. Then I found that it's because, unlike the passive infrared ones, where you can stand outside a room, the light goes out, and then as soon as you walk into the range of view, it goes on again. Unlike that, the Doppler lamps, like this one, can see you anywhere. And I don't mean that it just goes on and off randomly and you think it's detecting you. It really does detect you. Uh, this one's got a slightly shorter range, which is good. Uh, the first one I tried creeped me out because it could detect me through walls. You'd be looking at the reflection of the light uh, and it'd go out. And as soon as you moved anywhere in the house, it would light up. And it was just, it was creepy. This one's uh, just that little bit better. It's less sensitive, but uh, as soon as you go near the room, the door of the room that it's uh, in, it will light. And it's not a super high power. It says it's three watt. It, it probably, it doesn't look quite three watt, but it's probably Chinese three watts. And if you recall, the last one of these I took apart, you know, it just dumbfounded me. I didn't know what to say because it was nothing like what I expected. So let's, we'll tell you what, let's uh, open this one up for a start. Ugh. I've not had this open yet. I might not be able to open it. Uh, is this going to respond to being prized slightly? Oh, that might work. I may burst it. Oh, this, I don't know if this is going to work that well. Am I going to bend my spudger? Oh, that is tight. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that. That's different. Okay. The other lamp confounded me because it had a little circuit board that sat on top, and this time it's very clearly integrated. Now, I don't know if you can see that. There's, a, I'm not sure the well the contrast is going to be because it's white on white. Uh, let's try to turn this down until we can kind of see the reflection. Can we see reflection? There it is. Can you see the antenna that's zigzagging backwards and forwards? Now, the way these lamps work, uh, it turns out that the they emit, uh, they have a little antenna and it's very accurately tuned. It's etched on the circuit board. It's basically a couple of tracks and they're coupled with lots of through holes. And also the circuit board can sometimes act. I'm going to have to hug this out, in fact. The, sometimes the circuit board can act as the capacitors as well. And the circuit board acts as antenna capacitors. And I was absolutely dumb, dumbfounded by the last lamp because it used, I was expecting some special chip. Oh, this is unbelievable. I was expecting some fancy chip inside that was just aimed at the 2.4 gigahertz or gigahertz uh, frequency that these things use and it was going to be some really fancy circuitry. And another lamp it turned out to be a BISS0001 uh, passive infrared detector. And it turned out that someone had patented this concept of the Doppler circuit is basically... it. it emits just a, cons a single frequency of radio energy. It just emits a continuous... Um, what's the best way to describe this? It emits a continuous wave, you know, just a carrier wave of radio energy. And as you move about uh, backwards and forwards, it detects the fact as you move about, it changes the frequency of that slightly by reflecting the waves back faster or as you move away, the, the reflection uh, happens later. And the... It bounces back, and the circuitry is just based on one little transistor. This is just incredible. It's just, it's black art. It's, you know, and just weird. And just by the way it works, that, you know, it's generating this frequency, then it's getting the reflection, it's all mixed in the same circuitry. It's just this magic of high-frequency radio energy. You end up with a slight fluctuating voltage. And a standard passive infrared chip, in this case... Let's see if I can read that. It's, it's minute. EG4002C. EG400... I'm going to write that down. EG4002. And that was... C... So basically speaking, the signal that's being modulated by the reflections from the infrared 
is just interpreted as if it was a standard passive infrared detector because that's fundamentally how they work. They create a slightly undulating waveform when they detect movement. Except in this case, they've got rid. I'm, I'm going to see a lot more of these, I reckon. Well, we shall see a lot more of these come in simply because I think it's a lot cheaper to make. Instead of having the expense of the passive infrared component uh, which is quite probably one of the more expensive components, a little uh, pyroelectric sensor. All they need is this little RF transistor and the s tracks and capacitors built into the circuit board and the, a little row of capacitors here, and that's it. So what I'm seeing here, I'm seeing what looks like a standard switch mode power supply that you'd find in a typical 3-watt lamp, so it may well actually be 3-watt then. And it's deriving from that, it's... The open circuit voltage isn't going to be too huge. It's usually capped in these things. I can see the bridge rectifier here. I'm not seeing the diodes. Of course, this is going to be DC anyway. Oh. Uh, so it's smoothing the supply that's coming out of that. It's regulating it down with that little regulator, probably about 3 volts. I'm guessing this is a standard pass infrared detector chip, and they've just used an even smaller one, and then it's driving the circuitry. And basically, when the circuitry triggers then it'll just shunt, uh, use a transistor to shunt the uh, LEDs so they'll turn on. Um, I'm looking for the transistor that does that. There it is. Um, so, yeah, regulator, transistor that switches LEDs, RF transistor, and the little passive infrared detector chip that has been repurposed to detect modulation of the reflected RF energy. That's just unbelievable, isn't it? That they've integrated it so heavily. And there's the VLDR. So, now, here's an annoying thing. This one has that little nuisance that if you're moving about in the room, it completely ignores you while the lamp's on, and then it'll only actually sense again once uh, it's ended the time. So it actually goes off and on, this one. Uh, that one, if we, we'd found that before with another of the lamps, that it, all it took was a diode to fix. I'll have to investigate that with this one. I don't know why they're doing that. Um, but yeah, this is just, uh, it's cheap, it's uh, intriguing, and it works. Uh, this It's just weird. Th these are such an odd thing. I've got another... Um, Doppler lamp to to take apart. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be a, it's a fluorescent tube. It's gonna well not a fluorescent. It's an LED retrofit for a fluorescent tube. It's far too big for this bench. And when we take a look at that, I initially when I tried it one night, I thought it wasn't working. I, I connected a wire to each end, and it just seemed to stay lit all the time. Or when it went out, it immediately re-trigger. And it turned out it was actually detecting the fact there was a storm outside, and there was tree movement outside the house was actually. You know, just ambient movement outside the house was being detected through the walls. So uh, another thing I'm going to have to try experimentally is putting this in a wee box, so it's uh, in a dark box and it's putting out its RF energy, and see if it interferes with the other uh, lamps. I'm not sure how intermodulation between the RF sources is going to be. But yeah, these are these are weird and quite interesting little devices. Uh, this is going to be interesting to see what happens with these.